I'm gonna show you how to make a bioactive substrate, one that's as close to nature as possible. Let me know in the comments, have you guys got a bioactive enclosure? What animal is in it? And what quirky name have you given it? I love hearing all the quirky names we give for all of our animals. Now we're gonna talk about the details of everything that's gonna be needed. What are we gonna need? Number one, Cocoa core, you can get it in the brick, you can get it in the bags, you can do whatever you want. This is the Habistat version. I've also gone for some orchid bark as well, just because it's something that's gonna add that little bit of uh, to the substrate. Bit of sphagnum moss. We've got a bit of sand here as well. Now that's for the very bottom layer, simply because it helps with the drainage of the actual moisture going through the substrate. Charcoal, this is very important. This does a number of things which we'll talk about throughout the video. I dried up leaf litter. This is oak leaves, ideally go for a hardwood. I use oak because it's the one that obtains the most nutrients within the actual dried leaf itself. This is just a piece of white rotten wood, which I'm basically gonna smash up and add into the substrate. Shall we start to make it? First of all, we need to add in the cocoa core with our trusty knife. That'll do. As you can tell, there's quite a bit in there. Next up, the orchid bark. Now this just adds a little bit of structure to the actual substrate and just stops it compacting down very quickly. It also helps retain a bit of humidity and you can get, with this, the proper humidity cycles. So do you know how sometimes you can get like the morning dews and all that sort of stuff in your natural habitat? Well, why can't these get that as well? This is gonna help do that. The sphagnum moss. I use quite a bit of this because I want, especially in the top, top layers of the actual environment, just because it retains higher end humidity. So the humidity that you get at the top of the actual Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, goodness. It retains the humidity in the top layers, which is great for your plant life. It's great for your cleanup crew. It's just great all round. So we're just going to smash it all up, get it all going nicely, and we're going to work it into the actual substrate itself. Now, you do possibly think that is quite a lot. I do like a lot of sphagnum moss, especially in a tropical environment, just simply because I want that humidity to last in an exoterra all day long. So... That is the joy of a deep substrate, especially in an exoterra. It does retain its humidity throughout the entire day. And you do get a good humidity cycle. What is a humidity cycle? Well, that's basically the whole day's worth of humidity. You're going to get your ups and your downs throughout the whole day. Ideally, you want to match the natural humidity as much as possible. So, so through the day, in the heat of the day, in the wild, the upper layers of the substrate start to dry out. When it comes around to sunset sort of time, through the night the moisture from underneath the substrate starts to rise to the top and that's what gives off the humidity throughout the day with a deep substrate that's packed full of this sort of combination you're going to get that exact scenario which is what you want to do you want to naturally replicate what the animals naturally have in the wild god this is a lot of sphagnum moss and now it's time to mix it all in together What else goes into this top layer? Well, we've got leaf litter and quite a lot of it. Now I'm gonna get this and just proper crush it up. Why is this important? Quite simply, because this is what your cleanup crew tend to eat. They will eat this, then they will poo it out. That poo will then fertilize this, fertilize the plants ready for a really good growth of plants. The more plants you get in, the more carbon dioxide the plants suck in, the more oxygen that the plants can give out, the better, more naturalistic help we can give to our animals, the better they're gonna thrive. And it all starts down with a clean up crew and the best possible substrate you can make. So this is just, again, oak leaves, and we just really work it into the actual substrate, ready for the clean up crew to eat. Same goes for the big stick. We just break the stick up, smash it all up into loads of little pieces, take the bark off, it all goes in, just keep twisting. If it's rotten, it will twist and fall off apart in your hands. And just mix it all in. There we go, absolutely perfect. That is the perfect bioactive substrate for your tropical species. And the next step, you just wanna get your charcoal, crush it down as much as you possibly can, make sure it is clean, and drop a good couple of chunky handfuls into it. 
mix it all in. What that does is neutralizes the pH level and it helps the springtails repopulate because the springtails would mate on the charcoal. I don't know why that's that, but it is. But it does neutralize the pH level, makes it nice and balanced. So if you're using this for dart frogs, that would be absolutely vital. Now in the bottom layers, we've been talking about the top layers all the time. Grab some of that substrate from the top layer, whack it in a bucket. Now we're gonna make the bottom layer. The bottom layer is a lot more finer and that's because you need the drainage to drain out. It needs to compact down rather quickly to compact around the roots to give your roots strength so they won't, your animal just won't fall over. So you've got your, your normal top layer, add in quite a chunk of sand. I took in around about 10% sand to 90% actual substrate. Give that a good mix. Now this again, bottom layer. So your animal isn't gonna see this. This is solely for your plant strength and your plant growth. Once that's in, add in charcoal. mix that in. Now what does it do in the bottom layer? Does it need to be in the bottom layer? Ideally yes, you could do with more charcoal in the bottom layer because it cleans and filters the water as it's sifting through the layers going into your drainage layer. Then at night time when the humidity needs to pump up it comes from that drainage layer. So you know that you've got an extremely clean bacteria free moisture humidity going back into the environment. Once you do just mix all that up that is an absolute perfect bottom layer. In the middle layer, just add a little bit less sand, you only need a touch, less charcoal, and that'll be absolutely perfect. Top layer, bang it in. You only need a little bit of a bottom layer, medium sized middle layer, then just a chunk of actual top layer. The top layer is the most important because it's for the clean or crew, they eat it, they refertilize it, it's for the plants, the plants need to thrive, and the top layer really does help the plants. And it's for all the antibodies and microbodies that are actually in the actual substrate to help your animals thrive. You need to have an extremely healthy cleanup crew. By cleanup crew, I mean springtails, isopods, microorganisms that would naturally be found in the wild in that substrate. And again, I've explained that it really does clean the whole substrate out. It cleans all the fungi, everything, so that you know the humidity coming from the substrate into the actual environment that your animal lives in is clean and free from any bacteria. Let me know in the comments down below if you do anything different to this. This is just the way that I've done it over a few years and I've just improved it slightly with all the new information that I have picked up from either watching the talented people on YouTube or the scientific papers that I have read. You don't need to use Habistat or anything like that. It's just that's what I found on Swell Reptiles when I went for a look down. All the links for them are all down in the Swell Reptiles link in the description down below. And then it's simply just a case of adding in your Crustodians, so your isopods, your springtails, you're going to add in earthworms, anything that's going to eat that substrate to then potentially poo out that substrate, which will fertilize the substrate. For me personally, I've got my own springtail colonies up there, I've got my own isopod colonies over there. I'm just going to chuck them in and put it in now so that it has time to add a little bit more fertilization to that substrate before I actually use it. That is how I make my tropical bioactive substrate trying to keep it as naturalistic as possible to what that animal would naturally see in the wild. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've learnt anything, hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate you all.